Hello. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the installation of Ricochet's uh, aluminum skid plates on a 2019 Can-Am Maverick Trail. Now, the first thing you need to do to get your machine ready to install your skid plates is to remove all the factory skid plates. Um, unfortunately, Can-Am decided to rivet everything on, so you've got quite a bit of drilling to do just to draw the rivets off to get your stock stuff off. That's already taken care of on this machine. I'm going to show you a short little uh, demonstration on how to install or how to um, uninstall the rivets. And, uh, and then we'll move on from there. So like I said, that's already taken care of. In this video, I'm gonna be demonstrating uh, how to remove the rivets from these uh, Can-Am skid plates. All the factory stuff has to come off before you install any of the Ricochet. Can-Am loves their rivets, so it's a bit of a chore to get the factory stuff off, but I'm just gonna demonstrate how to do it. Um, sometimes they can be a little tricky, they can start to spin, but uh, we'll demonstrate that. So you're gonna take a drill bit, probably anywhere between 3 16 of an inch and a quarter of an inch. You need, don't need to go too crazy. Um, and then just uh, find the center and start drilling it out. See so that one we got lucky on, it didn't spin. Um, most of them probably won't spin, but if you do have one that starts to spin, the easiest way to do it is to get a screwdriver, if you can get in between the frame, that yeah, might be kind of tricky, or just you know wedge it up against the rivet to keep it from spinning. Also, don't press too hard when you're with the drill when you're drilling it, because that can also grab the rivet and cause it to spin. So just nice, even, steady pressure. Let the, let the tool do the work. That one is a little tricky, but we got it. So, uh, like I say, don't press too hard. Don't get that uh, drill bit in there to start spinning that rivet. So it'll probably actually take you longer to get your stock stuff off than it will to install the Ricochet set, but uh, that's the demonstration of how, uh, how to uh, drill out these rivets. Okay, now that you've drilled out all the rivets that are holding the uh, stock skid plates on, you can see that you're still left with these uh, rivet nubs. Um, you need to do something about that because the skid plates need to come up flush to the frame. Um, there's really two things you can do. The first thing you can do, you can just take a hammer and a punch and you can just drive it into the frame. Um, the only downfall of that is that all these are going to be captured, so they might, you know, rattle around. I doubt you'd hear them, but the, you might. Um, so if you don't want to just knock them into the frame, the other thing you can do is uh, you can take a, a cutoff wheel on a, on a die grinder or even a Dremel would probably work, and you can just cut all these nubs off flush of the frame. Now, you want to be careful. You don't want to get into the frame or, you know, start dinging up the frame uh, tube or whatnot. So... So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to take these and just cut this off flush. And you can see that's pretty much taken care of that. So now the skid plate will be able to butt up tight against the frame, this and that. This rivet's still actually locked in there, so this hasn't fallen back into the frame. So like I say, it's going to be a little bit more uh, time consuming to do it that way but you won't be knocking all these rivets into the frame themselves because once you knock them into the frame, they can't get out. There's nowhere for them to go. Um, before you uh, actually start installing your skid plates, once you get all of your stock stuff, all your stock uh, plastic off, you need to open up a couple holes in some plastic and it's gonna be the holes here on the side of the floorboard that were riveted on. It's gonna be the, the first one and then the third one. We're actually gonna be running bolts through those holes that are gonna tie into the skid plates for the floorboard skids and uh, the hole in the plastic isn't big enough to run the bolt through. So I usually take a half inch drill bit. Um, you don't have to go maybe quite that big, but that'll make sure that you've got enough, you know, uh, material removed to get the bolt through. So you're just gonna kind of pull the plastic out to the side and then just uh, open up that hole. Just like that. And that way you'll be able to run your bolt through. So it's gonna be the first one and then the third one. And you're gonna do that on both sides. So that's pretty straightforward there. So now, now we're ready to actually start installing some skid plates here. 
like I said, you'll do that to both sides. It's uh, already done on the other side. So it's the first hole and the third hole. Just uh, open up the plastic um, with about a half inch drill bit or so. Okay, so now we can install the next plate. Um, there's a couple spots on this one that you need to hang the clamps before you install the plate. And it's gonna be right back here uh, by this uh, drive, uh, drive shaft uh, bearing. You got this cross member here and then you got this bracket that the bearing support or is bolted to. And the clamp's gonna go right in between this bracket and this cross member right there. And then it's gonna be the uh, same thing on the other side. And those two clamps you need to hang before you get the plate in, into position. Um, the other clamps you're okay to install with the plate on. It's just a little tight to get those in. Now this plate is actually going to underlap, it's going to sit underneath this one here. So you need to get kind of like that sits underneath that lip up front. This one does, this plate does the same thing, but with the uh, plate in front of it. If you don't get that uh, <clears throat> into position, it's not going to line up with your uh, clamp holes back here. And again, I'm putting anti-seize on all these bolts. those two started and then you got your two round clamps and those are going to go on the front holes and with this you can actually reach through this access slot right here and get the clamp into position and then start your bolt. If your clamps aren't lining up, you know, make sure you have everything shifted forward. You know, you can be able to move the plate around and get everything to line up. And then that leaves us two clamps at the rear. And these are going to be the, uh, the square clamps again. And of these you can also get in with the plate on. get it through the access hole and then line it up with the slot and get your bolt started. Okay, so that's uh, loosely installed. And we can move on to the next plate. Okay, now this plate, um, when you install it, it's going to tuck underneath the plastic here on the side. And you'll see that we've got these uh, inserts that are pre-installed into the plate. And those inserts, they're going to line up with those holes that we had to open up. So, you 
bring it in like that. And then just there we go. Okay, when you're installing this plate, probably the most important thing to do is to make sure that your uh, inserts in this plate are lining up with those holes. And once they are, you can go ahead and uh, start your hardware according to the uh, placement guide. Make sure you get it underneath the plastic all the way back. This plastic has a seam in it back here, so make sure you're tucked underneath it all the way around. Be the two round clamps up front. And again, you want to make sure that these holes are lining up with the plastic there, otherwise your uh, floorboards are going to fight you. Okay, so that's all the hardware for this plate. And like I say, the most important thing is just making sure you got a clear sight through uh, the plastic for those inserts. It's looking pretty good. Then I can move on to the other side plate. It's pretty much the same thing.
Okay, so that's all the clamps started for that plate. And then uh, we got two bolts in the rear. Okay, we got two bolts in the rear here. Those are going to be your smaller uh, six millimeter bolts. Okay. Okay, so those rear bolts are started, and again, we're leaving everything loose. Okay, for the rear plate, you've got uh, the same type of clamps we've been using, and then you have what we call these nut plates. Um, the nut plates are going to be for the front two and the front rear mounts. Set your plate into position. I usually just kind of support it with my knee. And take your uh, nut plate and you can go through the access hole. Actually, it's probably easier to put those in first. Yeah, put your nut plates in first. They're gonna sit in this cross member. You got three holes, they're gonna pick up the outer two. So yeah, set those in first, that'll be a little bit easier. Then you can bring the plate up into position. And then start the bolt. You can use the access hole to uh, get that uh, nut plate lined up with the skid plate. Both spots here. Okay, and now we can do the rear. And that's also going to be the nut plates, and that's going to the rear one is going to be the longer bolts of uh, all of these. And that's actually easiest to come to the back of the machine and do it from behind. There's some holes, drainage holes in the frame. You'll see them when you get back here. run the bolt through the skid plate and then through those drainage holes in the frame and that nut plate on top. And then that leaves us the uh, the clamps here.
you got your big clamp and then you got the three small clamps. The big clamp's going to go in the front location here. And then we've got the three small clamps. They're going to go on the sides. Okay, and that takes care of all of our uh, hardware for the belly plates. So at this point, actually, let's put the front one on still. I still have that guy. I'm going to hang these clamps first. This is going to tuck underneath this lip here. This is one. Okay, so that's all the belly plates started with all the hardware loose. Um, like I say, biggest things you want to make sure is that your uh, nut inserts are clear in the plastic, which we are, so it looks pretty good. So at this point, we can just go ahead and uh, tighten everything down. You want to adjust everything for the best fit. And uh, yeah, we need to start tightening the bolts. Okay, that takes all the care of all the belly skids. So uh, now we can go ahead and install the top piece. And the top piece is just going to be uh, bolts and the uh, nut plates.
Okay, then we can just tighten that down. Okay, so that takes care of all of our uh, belly skids. Now we can uh, go ahead and install one of the uh, rock sliders. <clears throat> okay, so now we're ready to install the rock sliders. Um, like I say, this is where you need to make sure that your nut inserts are clear of the plastic. So you'll take your uh, rock slider and get it up into position. I need to open up this back hole a little bit. The plastic's overhanging. This had a bolt that did go through it originally, but it's just a little off. And then we can just tighten everything down.
Okay, so that takes care of the floorboards. It's the same procedure for both sides, so I'm just going to demonstrate it once in the video. Okay, now that we've got all of our uh, belly skids on and the floorboard skids on, uh, the last thing to install are the A-arm skids. Um, this is pretty straightforward. It's kind of a standard procedure for all the machines. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate the front. The rear, you're not really going to be able to see what I'm doing, but it's pretty much the exact same thing as far as how it mounts, you know, via the clamps and whatnot. So, so I'm just going to demonstrate the front. And uh, like always, you want to use uh, some anti-seize on the bolts. Just gonna take your skid, get it into position. And like I said before, all the factory stuff comes off, so remove any of the guards up front. They're not gonna go with the uh, with our A-arm skids here. Okay, so right now I'm just going to snug up the plate. I'm going to get it where I think it's going to fit the best. Okay, so that's just snugged right there. And is what we need to do, you need to make sure your front wheels are off the ground, the suspension is unloaded. You need to turn it all the way to the lock. And check for clearance. And then all the way to the other lock and check for clearance. Make sure you're not hitting anything, you know, all the way around front and rear. If you're uh, happy, with how, how it fits, you've got the clearance, then you can go ahead and uh, tighten, the, tighten the plate down. So that's looking pretty good, so we can just uh, finish tightening her down. Okay. And that takes care of the A-arms. It's the same procedure for both sides. And then, like I say, the rear is pretty much the same too. It mounts, you know, just uh, via the clamps. Um, you don't need to worry about the tires, you know, turning left to right on the rear, obviously. So, you know, just mount it up with the clamps and make sure you have clearance everywhere. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. So that's, uh, that's the installation of Ricochet's uh, aluminum skid plate set on the 2019 Can-Am uh, Maverick Trail. Thanks for watching.